Launch commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff with Apollo 14. Three minutes past the hour. The tower is clear. Houston is controlling. Would it shock you to learn that one of the only human beings ever to have set foot on the moon confessed on his deathbed that the only reason we are not all dead is because alien beings intervened with the United States and Russia during the Cold War to prevent nuclear annihilation of our civilization here on Earth. Wait, do you hear this? The National Security Act was signed that prevented any government official from disclosing or even talking about UFO or aliens as a measure of the utmost national security. If you spoke out, then there was a very real danger that whole families would disappear. So they just stayed quiet. But in 2016, at the ripe old age of 85, the sixth man to walk on the moon, Edgar Mitchell, disclosed on his deathbed that aliens were real. Not only that, but he had seen them with his own eyes. And if that was not a big enough of a bombshell, they also saved humans from self-destruction. In an exclusive interview with the Mirror Online, Mitchell said, White Sands was a testing ground for atomic weapons, and that's what the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military capabilities. My own experience talking to people has made it clear the ETs had been attempting to keep us from going to war and help create peace on Earth. I have spoken to many Air Force officers who worked at these silos during the Cold War. They told me UFOs were frequently seen overhead and often disabled their missiles. Other officers from bases on the Pacific coast told me their test missiles were frequently shot down by alien spacecraft. There was a lot of activity in those days. NASA responded to Dr. Mitchell's accusations in the past by saying, NASA does not track UFOs. NASA is not involved in any sort of cover-up about alien life on this planet or anywhere in the universe. Dr. Mitchell is a great American, but we do not share his opinion on this issue. Recently, the general public has been made aware of a top secret Pentagon program called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which investigated UFO sightings. The man who ran the top secret project, Mr. Luis Elizondo, wrote in a resignation letter to Defense Secretary Jim Mattis the following. Despite overwhelming evidence at both the classified and unclassified levels, certain individuals in the Defense Department remain staunchly opposed to further research on what could be a tactical threat to our pilots, sailors, and soldiers, and perhaps even an existential threat to our national security. It's crazy to think that this has all been going on for countless years. On a clear night, all you really have to do is look up. You are certain to see something that might just open your mind a little further. Anyway, guys, what do you think about Edgar Mitchell's deathbed confession? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. Doug into the very talented people. Uh, how about in addition to that, though? You know, we talk so much about the Roswell findings, what's there, what wasn't there, the secrecy surrounding that. But from your studies of astrophysics, uh, for, from being an astronaut, from going to the moon, from studying the pictures of the galaxy, tell me something that you've seen or that you've studied that you just feel in your gut there is something else out there. Well, that, that, you're saying it right. It's an intuitive feeling. Mm. <clears throat> After looking at, at the heavens and the modern pictures of the Hubble telescope from the Hubble telescope and seeing the complexities and the beauty and, and recognizing the universe is much more complex and magnificent than our earlier pictures, our earlier understanding would have ever uh, uh, let us imagine. And so <clears throat> that, you're right, that's the intuitive aspect of it. <clears throat> but the real question here that we've been addressing is have we been visited? Are we uh, since we are now a spacefaring civilization, having only gone to our own moon, but have our visitors, our, the aliens, have they come to us? And all the evidence says yes. 
So what is it that you want to see the Obama administration release? What is it specifically? What do you think is there that we need to see? Well, the uh, other nations, and this has been a global phenomenon, other nations in, in just in recent history, the Belgian nation, the, the French, the <clears throat> Brazilians, the Mexicans, the uh, Argentines, uh, all of their files have been opened up, and there's no reason in the world why the U.S. files, the leading nation in the world in this period, should have been reticent in opening ours too, except special interest groups. So, so Edgar, but so, let, me, let me ask you, I mean, for all the stories that have leaked over all the years, I mean, and, and there's always somebody somewhere that's going to leak something, and, and if there was really something there, don't you think by now somebody would have said <clears throat> something? Oh, it has. People have been saying it all along. But the, uh, for example, just the explanations of the Roswell incident has changed every few years and a new story comes out. If it were really uh, that simple, if it, <clears throat> if it weren't what it really was, you wouldn't need all of these various stories coming out. And so the attempt to cover this up and to disguise the issue and uh, create misinformation and disinformation is very well recorded. And the documentation from very fine researchers like Dr. Robert Wood uh, and his son Ryan who've investigated uh, all of the early documents all point to the same story. Hey, we've, we're not alone here when we've been visited. Well, Edgar Mitchell, I'll tell you what, we, it, it fascinates all of us. We'll stay on it and uh, please let us know if you're able to dig a little deeper and bring us a scoop. Edgar Mitchell, great to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, you heard from a man who's been where only a handful of earthlings have been before. Does his argument add any gravity to the issue? Tell us if you think the president should open up the mysterious UFO files and why. Our email, CNN Newsroom at CNN.com. We're going to read your responses in just a bit.
Are you receiving? Over. There are literally thousands of them. Friendship 7, uh, am I in contact with anyone? Over. Uh, this has been going on since about 1 uh, plus 1, 5. Over. Just after I remarked about the sunset, I looked back up and looked out the window, and uh, all the little swirl of particles was going by. Over. Uh, Roger, this 
this is Friendship 7. Understand everything looks okay. Hey Roger, Friendship 7. and I still have some of these very small particles uh, coming around the capsule, over. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, just as the sun came up, there were some brilliantly lighted particles that looked luminous that were swirling around the capsule. Uh, I don't have any in sight right now. I did have a couple just a moment ago when I made the transmission to you, over. Uh, this is Friendship 7 for the record. Uh, number, the number two film that I am putting in the camera is uh, is the number four roll. Friendship 7, all, all systems are going the capsule. 
Uh, I still have some of these little particles coming around the capsule occasionally here. I can see them against the dark sky even on the day side. Over. Roger, I understand. Uh, do you want your uh, emergency time now? Uh, this is Friendship 7, uh, ready to copy. Uh, area 2 Alpha 013638. Area Golf 030041. Uh, say again, Area Golf, please. Over. Area Golf 030041. Alright, your area. Golf is zero three plus zero zero plus four one. Is that a firm? Roger zero four plus three two plus four zero for hotel. Roger, Friendship 7, uh, we'll give blood pressure check. Uh, I still have some of these particles that I cannot identify coming around the capsule occasionally, over. Uh, Roger, how big are these particles? Uh, uh, very small. I would indicate they're of the order of a sixteenth of an inch or smaller. Uh, they drift by the window, and uh, I can see them against the dark sky. Uh, just as at, just at sunrise, there were literally thousands of them. It looked like just a myriad of stars, over. Roger, are they uh, losing volume or floating with you? Over. Uh, some of them uh, float almost with me. Most of them appear to be moving at about three to five miles an hour away from me. I'm going just a little faster than they are. Over. Roger. Seven. I also can see the light on my uh, 
on steam from the thruster when I operated over. Uh, Roger, thank you, Kevin. Uh, are your thrusters working? Are you, all your high thrusters working okay? Over. Uh, this is Friendship 7, uh, affirmative, uh, operating okay. Uh, this is Friendship 7, I think my, uh, I can see a little bit of steam spitting against the dark sky here occasionally from my pitch down manual thrust, over. Hi, uh, Roger. Uh, this is Friendship 7, all these little particles, there are thousands of them and they're not coming from the capsule, there's something that's already up here. Because they're all over the sky, way out, I can see them uh, as far as I can see in each direction almost. Well, I think they probably thought these particles I saw might have come from that. But these are, there are thousands of these things and they go out for, it uh, looks like miles in each direction from me and they move by here very slowly. I saw them at the same spot on the first orbit, over. Hi, Roger.